Well, I think you, you have you're configuring the switch and configure interface for a specific MAC address. So it would be in the startup config. So if you rebooted it, it would come back up with, and it'd be expecting that same MAC address to connect from startup. So if you tried to plug it in again, it would shut it down again. It kind of goes along with the question I was going to ask was that uh, how long does it maintain these MAC addresses to know that that well, MAC addresses generally time out of the uh, the CAM table after about five minutes if they haven't received any traffic. So if um, as long as it's um, the port is still receiving frames from that MAC, it's never going to wipe it from the CAM table. But if after a, a, approximately five minutes, depending on the equipment, if it hasn't received any frames from that particular MAC address, it's going to flush it from the CAM table. From the uh, port security maximum. Mm -hmm. default is unlimited. Um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. If you don't, ha I'm sorry. Yeah, if you don't have a, if you don't have um, switch port security set up, like to enter that switch port port security maximum eight, it requires a number to follow that, like, or it's going to say it's an incomplete command. But by naturally, like, it's not going to have a limit set on there because you can connect. You know, potentially a hub with hundreds of devices if you're not using these these poor security uh, methods. It says a uh, limit system excluding one MAC per port 1024. So from zero to 1024 mm. per port. That, that I guess that makes sense. Um, and then <coughs> you can also set up static maps, uh, static MACs to uh, with port security. Um, so this is assuming like you already know the MAC addresses of the devices that are going to connect on each port. You can statically assign that MAC address to each port to prevent unauthorized access. So it basically says only this port, only this MAC address can connect to this port. Configuration for that again, you jump into the uh, the configuration for that particular interface. In this case, fast Ethernet zero slash three. Um, from interface configuration mode, switch port port security to enable port security, and then switch port port dash security. MAC dash address and then whatever the MAC address tends to be. Um, in this case, you know, we've got FB69, 1002, 60F1. So basically, when you, whenever you set that, it's not going to accept any other MAC addresses from connecting to that port. Like it's just going to discard any frames that, um, that connect there. Unless you set a policy, you can actually have a shutdown or that kind of thing. Um, another very similar option to this is you can uh, use the switch port port dash security MAC address sticky, the global command, um, to have a switch statically set the MAC it has previously learned dynamically for a particular interface. So basically what that does is you turn on your switch, you got it all configured, you connect up all the PCs, it builds a CAM table, you enter this command in there, and it says, well, I've got this MAC corresponding to this uh, in my CAM table, I'm going to statically set that so that's always the MAC address it presumes, so it prevents people from, I mean, I guess it prevents people from moving ports over without an administrator there, but it does uh, give you some pretty high level security as far as which devices are physically connected to the network. And then uh, for verifying port security, um, the command show port dash security interface and then the, the interface number. And you can see when it does that, it'll show you the, the status, you know, enabled uh, the port status, um, the violation mode if they're, you know, what, it's, what action it's going to take if, um, if a violation occurs, aging time, um, you know, uh, number, number of MAC addresses connected, the maximum MAC addresses configured for that port, and the last source address, all that kind of stuff. And if, you're, if you've got any violations, you'll see the security violation counter increment. Um, and then you can also use the, the show port dash security address command, and it'll show you, you know, each of the, um, each of the VLANs and their, their corresponding uh, MAC addresses and security types set for those ports. Uh, and then VLAN security, um, attackers are generally going to try to attack VLAN 1 because it's the management VLAN. Um, these, it's basically VLAN 1 has a little bit more uh, clout because it's, it's handling management as well. These attacks can be mitigated in one of three ways. Um, you can administratively shut down all unused ports, uh, which really isn't a bad idea, but if you're trying to have users connect to other devices on the fly, you're going to have to have an administrator there to re-enable ports. The other thing you can do is you can configure a separate VLAN to act as the management VLAN. Uh, basically set up a VLAN other than VLAN 1 to act as the management uh, VLAN so that there's not a problem there. Uh, and then the last possible step you could do is um, 
instead of shutting all those ports, you can assign all unused ports to an unused VLAN other than VLAN 1. You know, since naturally any port in there is going to be set to VLAN 1, which may be a little bit dangerous, you can all set them to, you know, VLAN 99, which doesn't route anywhere. So um, if a user connects to that, they'll get an IP and everything, they'll get a, a, a valid port, but they're not going to be able to do a whole lot until you uh, change them to another VLAN that does work. Well, that's, that's just going to um, create like a, a VLAN 100. It's not going to, because you're always going to have VLAN 1. Like you can't, you can't get rid of it um, more or less. Uh, you can like set up a different VLAN to act as a management VLAN. So VLAN 1 doesn't have the same amount of power it did before. But you're, you're always going to have VLAN 1 as well as a management VLAN. Um, and then you should also prune out any VLANs from a trunk that don't need to be there. Um, talked about this before, if you've got a, a trunk going to a switch that's only uh, has ports for one particular VLAN, you should probably go ahead and prune out any other uh, VLANs that don't need to be on there. So in this case, for this trunk, on interface fastest ethernet 0 slash 1, commands are you know, switch port mode trunk, make it a trunk, and then uh, switch port trunk allowed VLAN, and then you can uh, put in your list of VLANs. Now if you're uh, if you've got consecutive VLANs, you can do like we did here, which is a dash between them. So basically this allows VLANs 1 through 40. And you can also use the comma to add additional single VLANs on there. So this is allowed for uh, VLANs 1 through 40 as well as VLANs 80 and 90. Um, these can be further modified with the add, remove, and accept commands. Um, so like if you, if you set this up right now, you can go back in later and do a switch port, mo uh, switch port trunk, you know, allow to add VLAN 1, etc. Um, if that wasn't already in there. Or you can um, you can do the accept command, which will basically say, you know, add all VLANs except, and then whatever VLANs follow after the accept command. And then uh, to verify those VLANs, um, just do a show interfaces trunk. You'll be able to see the trunk and all of the, uh, the VLANs that are allowed to traverse it. And then uh, VTP password, make sure you set a VTP password or a hacker can change or destroy your VLAN configuration via VTP. We talked about that before the last chapter. Um, command is just going to be VTP password and then whatever your password is going to be. I don't really even think of this as like an extra security feature. I, I think of this as if you're going to set a VTP at all, like this is part of the process of setting up VTP. It needs to be done anyway. Um, and then a, a last thing that you may want to do is uh, disable CDP or Cisco Discovery Protocol on certain interfaces. Um, since CDP advertises a lot of information about like what kind of equipment you've got on your network, interfaces, all that kind of stuff, um, if you've got it CDP enabled on a port facing out to like the public internet or something, it may be advertising a lot of uh, system information that you really don't want sent to uh, another device. You pretty much only want CDP to advertise information between devices on your particular network that you've got direct control over. You don't want to send that to the ISP or really anybody else. And that is chapter 16. Like I said, a lot of it was um, rehashing a lot of stuff from the router security, but um, any, any questions on that part?